You are listening to Living the Clover Life. As we go through this series on Theology of the Body, we are going to be talking about adult topics as relate to the human body and married life. We encourage parents to listen to this episode first before sharing it with your children. Hello and welcome back to Living the Clover Life. We're on our last episode of this series of the Theology of the Body, and today we're going to be talking about how to talk to your kids about sex, a very important topic, right, Nathaniel? Absolutely. And you know what, Father, we parents need a lot of prayer in that. So let's start with (laughs) prayer. Yeah, why don't we start with prayer before we do this? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, you have created each one of us in your image and likeness to give and to receive love. Help us to, to find confidence, to teach on the goodness and the truth of the human body to our family, to our friends, uh, in the many ways that you ask us to spread the good news. Help all parents who are anxious about this conversation to be at peace and to know that you will love them and guide them through it. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So, yeah, there's probably, uh, you know, I'm not a parent, but I do teach theology of the body to to middle schoolers, but I'm sure there is a lot of fear and a lot of parents come to me with fears and apprehensions about how do I talk to my kids about sex? When should I talk to my kids about sex? All these sorts of questions. Yeah. And I mean, it is a really important topic. And so the pressure is definitely on, but sometimes there's, you know, fear of the awkwardness of like, Ooh, this is kind of a weird subject to talk to my child about. And I've always thought that a really great way to think about it is imagine, you know, this is a superhero story and you're revealing to your child that they're a superhero, right? And they have these special powers. You'd be excited about that, right? Well, all of us as sons and daughters of God are called into his divine life. And for many of us, we're called into marriage, right? And that is to take part in the supernatural power of God in creating new life, in uh, joining together with one another, in sacrificing our body, laying our body down in love for another. And so, you know, it's necessary for kids to know about these things because these, these superpowers can bless people. They can be an amazing thing, or if misused, they can, they can hurt people. They can hurt themselves. And so often as parents, we can have a tendency to put this off as long as possible. And we're going to talk today how maybe that isn't quite the the best approach to things. We want to be first. You're going to hear that a lot today. We want to be first. Um, We want the kids to know that God's plan for them is good. He loves them. He made their body good and beautiful and holy. He made sex very, very good and beautiful and holy. The church doesn't hate sex. The church desires sex and our bodies to be used in a way that glorifies God, blesses us and those around us. Yeah, so there, there is this idea that you really do want to be first in talking to your kids. Once they've heard something, that becomes like the baseline of their knowledge. Absolutely. And so what you tell them, you want that to be the baseline, not what they, they find out from somebody else or someplace else or something that you didn't expect. And as I send couples to uh, pre cana retreats and our diocesan ethicists, uh, they... the doctors and nurses that that participate in that are all saying the same thing. You got to start this conversation almost as soon as they can begin to understand the facts of life right. and and keeping things very basic, being very uh, proactive, confident. You're, you want to make yourself an expert on sex and sexuality from the very beginning of your kid's life. You know, so we're, we're talking as as early as four or five years old, as soon as they can understand, okay, terms like penis, vagina, uh, testicles, to know what their body parts are, not using metaphors and cutesy things, but the the real facts. Because again, you don't want to be challenged on a cutesy term that you come up with that they then later find out, well, that wasn't the exact term that my parents taught me. And maybe I should doubt other things that they have told me. So talking about the mechanics of their body, how they work, what they're for. Mm -hmm. Uh, Even if you explain that these things are for much later in life, because when you're prepubescent, one of the, one of the great advantages about explaining their bodies to them is it's not personal. Right. You know, they, they don't, it's just like any other fact of life that, uh, that the sky is blue or the sun comes up in the East or, 
one plus one equals two. It's just that I this is a, a body part. This is what it is. What this is what it's used for, and it's used for what mommies and daddies. Uh, when someone is a mommy and a daddy, and as far as they're concerned, at four, five, six years old that's like an eternity away. It's right. not like it's right around the corner. You and I know that it's, you know, within 10 years that they're going to hit puberty. They're going to be feeling these things uh, in a very different way. But as far as they're concerned from that very young age, it's an eternity away and it's not felt as so personal. Right. And that's why kids will, you know, just say blunt thing sometimes. Right. Well, and the, the passions haven't been engaged in the body, right? The hormones aren't raging yet at this point. And it's important to point out that these are ongoing conversations. You know, this is not a, uh, a classroom experience, right? It's a, it's a, a lifestyle of mentoring, a lifestyle of instruction and sharing and just guiding your children into the truths uh, of life. This is also a great time to talk to your children about how sacred their bodies are, right? right? And, you know, in terms of defending our children, especially in this day and age, you know, these are very special parts of your body. They're, they're good and only, you know, uh, medical professionals and mommy and daddy, if they need to, you know, should be seeing these parts of your body should be, you know, helping you with these parts of your body. And that is, again, a good baseline for us to, to start with. Now, you don't need to dive into all the nitty gritty details at this point. You don't need to dive into STDs and to, you know, all right, of that. That'd be kind of right. awkward. For <laughs> well, it's all awkward, Father. But, you know, <laughs> there's certain things they just don't need to be thinking about. And we don't want to scare our children, right, about sex. We right. don't want we them want to, to keep be... it positive, right. the beauty, the wonder, what a gift this is. But you're also, like you said, you're setting them up for protection, too, that these right. are sacred parts of our body. These mm -hmm. are gifts from God and that uh, that not anybody and everybody can come into that space. And that's why mom and dad should be both involved. We've talked about the masculine and feminine genius. Right. And whether you're talking to your little boy or your little girl, for them to hear the perspective from from both uh, both the sexes is important for them to integrate this communication to themselves as well. Right. And, you know, your kids should understand this is a special topic that they're being brought into. They should not share this with their younger siblings, with uh, their, their peers. This is a, a special conversation that shouldn't be really shared around at this point. However, there are some, unfortunately, some tough conversations, some tough uh, topics that you do need to approach early on. Uh, like pornography. Again, you don't need to dive into every single thing, but you can point out to your children, you know, there are, are bad people doing bad things, right? People who don't respect other people's bodies, who who take pictures and, and put them out there. And we shouldn't look at those. You don't have to, again, dive into every single detail about that, but your child is going to encounter pornography at some point and knowing what to do in response to that is really an important gift and tool to give them. And if we're just not aware, I mean, just the age of exposure gets lower and yes. lower and lower. Um, and it's because the, the porn industry is a multi-billion dollar yes. industry and they know their product is addictive and they want to get people addicted as early as possible. And so putting out links, links that they think kids will click on yes. so that they will see these things and making sure that your kid knows that if they see something on the internet, see something on their phone, on their tablet, that they- With, with a friend, you know? Yeah, uh, or, or however it, it might come across, them feeling comfortable to show you, to tell you, yep. and, and for you to reiterate, this wasn't your fault that you saw this, that you were exposed to this, uh, but it's not right that uh, what people have put out there, we don't wanna look at this stuff, that it's, it's bad for us in the end as well, it's addictive. I mean, you don't get into the addictive part, but you know that as a baseline or should know that. And so again, this is why being the first to talk about your kid is so important because I mean, it's just out there and there are so many outside influences. If you have a TV in your house, your kid's being exposed to another vision of sex and sexuality yeah. or access to the internet. Even, even though you may have so many social controls on it, I don't care how many controls you have yeah. on it. Kids know how to and find ways to get around them, yeah. whether on purpose or on accident, right. it just happens. Yeah. Social media, other friends, you know, you don't know what kind of access they might have right. to other things that your kids being exposed to. And this is again, not to draw us into fear, but if we can be that first voice and yeah. they can know that they can come talk to us about what they are seeing or what their experience when it comes to the idea of sex and sexuality, 
you know, we we have a foundation right. to keep the conversation going and and to to keep ministering to them. And like Father said earlier, if you are the first exposure that your child has to this this special knowledge, you become the reference point. You become the expert. Mm-hmm. And the more you can establish yourself as a loving but truthful and frank expert, the more ongoing relationship you can have with your kids. And look, if your child has a phone, they are 100% able to access pornography. Yeah, that's sad. Um, it is sad, but again, that multi-billion dollar industry is out there looking for your child. Groomers are out there looking for your child. Again, not to, to foment fear, but to emphasize that no matter how many tools you have, which you should use, by the way, you should have uh, blocks and, and monitoring uh, apps and so on on your children's phones, but more important than any of that is that relationship, is that yes. loving relationship that I will take you back. I will work with you through struggles that you have, things that come up. You always want to be the expert, yes, but also the compassionate and loving expert who who cares yeah. about them profoundly. I love it. And, you know, we we might see that, well, I haven't had this conversation before puberty. And it's all right, because <laughs> yes. better late than never. Absolutely. Um, but, but the conversation does start to change as you do get into puberty and, uh, be, and they will start to experience sex and sexuality on a very personal level because their, their experience of themselves and of other people are changing and being able to recognize that because now the conversation is going to start going into things like, you know, how to deal with these hormone changes and emotions and being able to recognize those and not to react to, right. you know, anger that might be coming out of boys or girls who are, are feeling just very insecure about uh, other changes in themselves or about peer pressure that they're beginning now to experience uh, in, in so many avenues and ways. You know, those become important things that we we have to be self-aware of and and find ways to, to talk to them as we know our kids and what they'll yes. receive and and how to uh, how to talk about these things but obviously there are some clear do's and don'ts yeah and i think the first one is don't just have the talk right, right. and then we're never going to talk about this again right it should, again should be an ongoing mentorship relationship with your with your child don't give the impression that sex is dirty or, or try to scare them uh, or you know, make turn them off from sex, as it were. You know, you should emphasize. No, yes, it, it's good and it's healthy that you have these these desires. But again, orienting those desires correctly towards God's plan for you is really really important because our children will think that if we tell them that sex is bad, they're going to find out at some point that sex is actually really good, and you will have lied to them mm. and prevented them from being in a relationship in you, with you as they go through that process of puberty and dealing with those those hormones, those passions that they're going to start to have. Yeah. And remember, you are the expert. You know, if you, you've had a kid, you know, you're good at sex. I mean, yeah, it worked out for you in the end. <laughs> so I had to throw that in there, lighten the topic. But don't, you know, don't slide a book under their door. Yeah. Don't say, go watch this video. It needs to be personal because sex and sexuality is very personal and they have a relationship with you. Not that you can't use, you know, good, holy resources, but again, it should be done in the context of relationship, not, hey, here's this stuff, go figure it out by yourself. Mm-hmm. that leads to disaster. You know, that way danger lies. You don't want them to be alone because every child going through puberty feels alone, right? Mm. They feel like I'm the only one experiencing this. They, they can't see that everyone around them is dealing with the same things. They all feel as though I'm alone in this. And the less alone we can make our children feel as they approach puberty and, and go through those tough times, the more success they'll have in navigating it well, and the more grace they'll be in the relationship that we continue to have with our children in an ongoing way. So one of the most important do's is reminding them of the goodness of their body. Absolutely. I I love talking about, you know, God gave us a body. We're going to have those bodies in eternity. And of course, what do kids tend to struggle with some of the most is is body image. Mm Mm-hmm. And reiterating again and again, your body is beautiful. Your body is good. You are a temple of the Holy Spirit. You are made in the image and likeness of God. All these things kind of remind us, but then that they're sacred too, and that there's a right and wrong way to use our bodies, all those sorts of things, and and, and supporting them in that. I think also one of the things that's really important to understand is that part of this process is not even really talking about sexuality as such, but developing and cultivating a 
profound relationship between your children and Jesus Christ, yes. right? He's the one who has their best interests at heart. He's the one who loves them more than anyone else ever could. And he's the one that gives them their identity. Amen. You know, that, that as, as a young man or a young woman, you, you have your identity in him. You have your identity through your relationship with him. And then you learn how to act based on that relationship. And even more so, uh, that relationship with the church as being a positive maternal relationship, as opposed to, you know, the church is keeping you down. We don't like what the church teaches about this or that. And then also further in a relational way, and again, not in particular talking about sex, but fathers I want to talk to you for a second, how you love your daughter and respect your daughter and love your wife and respect your wife does so much oh, yeah. for how your children look at seeing how the sexes should relate to each other. Because, Children know innately that their father in general is stronger than their mother. And so how that, that strength is used, how that dignity is imparted to the wife, both tells girls how they are to be loved. And then boys, it tells them how they are to treat women. Both of those things are essential for how your child approaching and growing into their femininity and masculinity as they become man and woman, not just boy and girl. And really diving into their questions, again, if you, you keep developing this relationship where we can talk about these things, it, it's a safe place. Hopefully we've started really early so that they know that they can keep talking about these things as they get more explicit problems and issues such as uh, masturbation or dating or what are their phone expectations, modesty, yeah. how to look attractive, but to dress in a respectful way but then also into their questions about when they see people in their family, their friends who are not living what you're teaching. Yeah. And that becomes a hard thing when you start to say things like, well, marriage is between one man and one woman till death to us part. And we see aunts and uncles, cousins, friends that are, are not doing these sorts of things. And they're asking, well, what's up with that? And, and they're trying to figure out, well, who's right, who's wrong? How do I make sense? And how do I, I love this person and can still see that they're maybe making a bad choice. And of course, that's always an important conversation that we, we love the sinner, but we hate the sin. You love your kids, even when they do wrong things or things that are against what, what you have taught them as right. And, and you still love them and you, you try to teach them to come to a better understanding of how to rightly live in the world. And, and, kind of using that analogy can be helpful for talking about other family and friends who are in that situation and, and how they're trying to make sense of that. Yeah. And I think one thing also to equip your child for is peer pressure, right? You know, that's a kind of a buzzword, mm. but it's so true. During our pubescent years, we are so influenced by those around us in a way that chemically is very different from people at other stages uh, of life. We're all influenced by peer pressure, but kids at that age are even more so, uh, potentially caught up in what's going on around them. I think it's really essential that parents, when their child starts going out and doing things in the world alone, that uh, one, they have something like a safe word that they can call you on the phone and say something to you. Hopefully it's something that's not uh, overly, uh, overly obvious to those around them, but something that says to you as a parent, hi, I need you to come pick me up. I need you to come get me out of this situation. And that covers a multitude of situations, but it gives your kid an easy out. And let your kids, kids blame you. Oh, my mom says she's going to come pick me up. Like, oh man, or my dad's going to come pick me up. That is really, really important because then your child knows, mom, dad, they have my back and they're going to take care of me. They're, they're going to walk me through this. Alongside that dating, right? Dating uh, starts earlier and earlier and earlier in our culture. Um, my kids won't be dating until they're about 49 or 50, but you know, for some people it starts earlier. So in that being again, involved, being present to provide grace and accountability to your children when, when they're uh, with their boyfriend, girlfriend, but also when those questions arise as to, you know, how far is too far and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. It's really, really important, again, that you are ready with an answer for that. And it shouldn't be, well, you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't right. do that. Obviously, if anything needs to be unbuttoned, unzipped, pulled up, pulled down, it's too far, those sorts of things. <laughs> but also helping them to understand that, you know, imagine you're carrying that person who you care about next to, and there's a cliff. Would you say, well, how close can I get to the edge of that cliff before we fall? Like, no, you, you, you wouldn't play with that. It's, it's such a, a, a dangerous thing. 
And again, sacred things are not, quote, nice things. They're not like easy things. They're profoundly important. They're sacred. They're, they're, they're to be held in wonder and awe. We mm-hmm. should approach them with the, 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 the sort of fear and awe of, of God for the plan that he had for them. So helping your children to understand and to navigate what it means to be in relationship with their friends, what it means to be in relationship with someone when they're dating, and to accompany them through that is also really important uh, as part of this conversation. Yeah, I like that. Uh, would you really take someone, carry them to the edge? Like, how far can I get without like dropping them <laughs> yeah. off the edge? Oops, you know, went too a, far. They died. That's a great analogy. I always tell uh, tell the kids too, like. You know, it, once your body starts to get the message that it's time for sex, you know, then you've definitely gone too far. Now, but one one other thing is parents talking to their kids about how, when they begin to feel kind of what I would call disordered affections and things like that. Maybe uh, maybe they are having experiencing same sex attractions. Maybe are they are wondering about their their gender identity and these sorts of things. And again, bottom line is that loving relationship with Jesus, going to Jesus and trying to understand, you know, who they are in him uh, and, and that they have a loving community in the church. Uh, puberty is a hard time because our bodies are changing. We yeah. do get a lot of mixed uh, emotions and feelings going on in our bodies. And then we're being told by the culture a certain narrative that, well, if you feel this way, you must be this way. There are things that we have to be careful about because there's a lot of change that's happening. And again, getting them in that right relationship with Jesus, uh, getting them to understand that it's it's not just God's rules, but it's it's God's game plan for making us the best version of ourselves. Going even further into combating the lie that this culture tells about pretty much everything, which is that my understanding, my feelings determine reality, sure. right? Helping kids to understand that, yes, you have feelings and they are valid. Yes, you have thoughts and it's important that you are able to share those. However, just because you feel something or think something doesn't make it right or true, right? I get upset at someone. I feel like punching them. That's not right. Like my feelings don't. You don't, never don't, feel that way. No, I never feel that way. Uh, <laughs> But if I were, if some people I've heard feel that way, but you know, that feeling doesn't justify what I'm about to do. Also, our feelings, especially during puberty, are so unlinked from reality. They are just, and in many ways, connected to what our body's doing right now. Mm-hmm. And learning to navigate that in the most tumultuous time is really hard. But, you know, dealing with the effects of the fall and disordered desires, whether they are uh, too far or too, uh, uh, too limited, trying to find that ordered balance of God's plan for us is again, another, uh, journey that you walk with your child through. Yeah, this is so good. This has been so good. And really parents just coming up with a plan together, talking together about how can we have this conversation wherever our kids are right now mm-hmm. is what's most important and finding the right resources to help us to to do that can be important. Finding teachable moments, finding ways to, to be able to do that is really the game plan in the end. In the description, we're going to put some uh, resources uh, from some of the best known Catholic teachers on the theology of the body, especially for speaking with your kids about these things. In the end, remember to pray, you know, just Amen. to pray for your kids, to pray for their, their purity, to pray for their life in Christ, to pray for their vocations, and also encourage your kids to pray for their future spouse. Amen. Yes. That's so important as well. Even if they're going to become a priest or a nun, you know, you're praying for the church. Yeah. That's your future <laughs> spouse as well. When Our Lady appeared in Fatima, she gave a message to Sister Lucia that the final battle was going to be over marriage and the family. So we know this is a battle and prayer is our greatest weapon, love and relationship with our kids. Yes. And they're centered on Jesus and Mary and and everything that we stand for. So we'll be praying for you. Keep praying for us as well. Be sure to join us next time when we'll be talking about overcoming the deadly sins. Until next time, keep living the Clover life. You've been listening to Living the Clover Life. For more information about St. Malachi Catholic Parish, check out our website at stmalachy.org. S-T-M-A-L-A-C-H-Y dot org.